bony orbit or orbital cavities are two cavities inside the skull, which contains the eyeball, the optic nerve, the extraocular muscles that move the eyeball, of course, and the blood vessels and nerves for these structures. We also have adipose tissue inside the, inside the orbital cavity. This pyramidal shaped cavity has a base that right here, which opens into the face. It has an apex where we can find the optic canal, and I'm going to show you that in a second. And then it has four walls, the superior, medial, inferior, and lateral walls. So let's begin with the bony landmarks inside the orbit. The apex of the orbital cavity, as I said, is where we can find the optic canal. I'm going to pass my pipe cleaner through the optic canal right there. And as you can see, the optic canal connects the orbit into the middle cranial fossa right here. That is middle cranial fossa, okay? Right here and there. So then optic nerve passes through the optic canal. The superior wall is mainly made by the orbital plate of the frontal bone. And as you can see, this wall separates the orbit from the anterior cranial fossa. Right here is anterior cranial fossa. Okay. On the anteromedial side of the superior wall, we have the trochlear fossa. But on the anterolateral one, right here, we have the lacrimal fossa. This lacrimal fossa actually holds the part of the lacrimal gland. Okay, so let's go with the medial wall. The medial wall of the orbit right here is mainly made by the ethmoid bone. And we have the ethmoid or air cells inside the ethmoid bone here. On this wall, we can find two important bony landmarks, this one and this one, anterior and posterior ethmoidal foramina. And then you can imagine actually the anterior and posterior ethmoidal artery, nerve and vein, or vein artery and nerve. We usually we say we have van, right? Vein artery nerve um, pass through these openings. Moving anteriorly on this wall, we can find the lacrimal groove right here, which contains the lacrimal sac. And this lacrimal groove is actually connected to the nasolacrimal duct that I'm passing my pipe cleaner through. And the nasolacrimal duct connects the orbit to the nasal cavity. When I move my uh, probe, I mean my pipe cleaner, you can see uh, the pipe cleaner inside the nasal cavity right there. Then you can imagine that this nasolacrimal duct connect the orbit to the nasal cavity. Now, when we have extra amount of uh, um, tear, uh, it passes through this duct and drains into the nasal cavity. You can imagine now when we cry, when we say, <laughs> we sniff. So that is the extra amount of the tear actually comes to the nasal cavity. Now, the inferior wall of the nasal cavity is, mo uh, sorry, the inferior wall of the orbital cavity is mostly made by the maxilla. And you can imagine that actually separates the orbit from the maxillary sinus. And um, the last but not least, the lateral wall, um, right, right here, mostly made by the zygomatic bone and the sphenoid bone. Okay. So the other bony landmarks that um, I would like to walk you through uh, when it comes to the orbit um, are um, two big openings here, one at the back right there, and I'm going to pass my pipe cleaner through that. That is superior orbital fissure right there, which is located between the greater wing and lesser wing of the sphenoid bone. And then uh, if I follow the pipe cleaner or pass my pipe cleaner through the superorbital fissure, we will see this fissure connects the orbit to the middle cranial fossa. Right here is the middle cranial fossa again. So then you can imagine some structures passing or actually pass through this, this opening. The other fissure in the orbit is this one right here, which is called inferior orbital fissure. That inferior orbital fissure connects the orbit to the pterygopalatine fossa and infratemporal fossa. So I'm going to pass my pipe cleaner. See the, my pipe cleaner right there behind the ramus of mandible? So right there, that is infratemporal fossa. Then you can imagine 
uh, there are structures actually pass through the inferior orbital fissure and connect the orbit to the inferior infratemporal fossa as well as the pterygopalatine fossa. Okay, now on the floor of the orbit here, uh, right connected to the inferior, inferior orbital fissure here, we have a groove, it's called infraorbital groove. Then we have canal right there, infraorbital canal, and eventually the groove and canal are connected to this opening in the face right there, which is called infraorbital foramen. Infraorbital foramen. The infraorbital nerve artery and vein um, pass through through this opening. Okay. So um, the last thing that I want to actually uh, walk you uh, through um, or talk about the, uh, the orbit um, is um, this opening right there in the superior orbital margin right there. Um, this side, you see there is a notch, supraorbital notch. However, on this side, we have supraorbital foramen. So is that this is kind of the normal variation. It could be notch or foramen and uh, the terminal branches of V1, the supraorbital nerve, uh, uh, pass through this opening, as well as the supraorbital artery and vein. Then practically we have supraorbital van pass through this opening, and infraorbital one, of course, um, through um, the infraorbital foramen. I also need to, uh, to remind you that looking at two orbits, the medial wall of the orbits, okay, are kind of parallel, right? Whereas the lateral wall are angled. So then it can affect actually the functional anatomy of the muscles that uh, move, the, move the eyeball. 